Hey everybody, it's Free Sky Steve, and today we're talking about the Ethos 1.5. And yes, it's not out yet. Yes, it's still in beta release, or as we call it, release candidate. And yes, if you put it on your transmitter, you're going to be stuck in release candidate jail. And you're going to have to keep putting new updates in all the time. Um, it's kind of a big commitment if you're just a guy who wants to go out and fly. But you're a little bit curious of what's about to come out. Today we're going to look at it. And now you can actually download the simulator and start playing with it. I want to point out a few things that will get you maybe kind of excited about this entire endeavor. Um, first and foremost is we're looking at the screen here. And this, I want to talk about things that will make a difference. The timer screen is enhanced. And I do mean greatly enhanced. So the idea behind this is that we didn't have a stop condition before, and we certainly couldn't customize it. So you can have your timer start, and you can have them stop, and they can be very specific as to what starts it and what stops it, and then also what resets it. So, And then the other thing, persistent, means that it stays on forever. You can add voices to it. Very cool. So... That is in and itself amazing. I want to go into settings really quick and show you this. This is general. And this is kind of what I've noticed across the board. As a lot of things have improved with Ethos 1.5. Um, I tend to set up a lot of transmitters. And the thing that we had to do before was they had to press this bar, the volume bar, in order to get to this. You had to press and hold on it. And unless you knew that there was there, there was no way to add something like for example the big red slider on the X20S uh, that's where I like to put the volume on it all you have to do is do that and you can assign it it's easy for me it's easier to sign uh, I don't think you would want to assign it to a uh, switch but that's how you would do it you would put it on pot 3 for example and that would be the big red slider uh, in the middle of the X20S transmitter. Uh, yeah, so they have that for brightness as well. I found that to be really nice. A lot of thoughtful, nice additions. Uh, this looks like it's almost exactly identical. If you go into something that I think most people will be curious about is mixtures, um, and you select the mixer library you'll start to notice that hey we have less mixes here uh what happened to vars it was right there so yeah it's still here but it got enhanced so we're gonna get out of here and we're gonna go into the next page i can press page down to get to the next page there it is right there so the vars and logic switches these are two things that if you're into heavy-duty programming and ethos, these are pretty much logic switches and global variables you remember from your OpenTX days on steroids. They are night and day better than what anything that's come before it. I'm sorry, this is going to be something that really separates the ethos operating system from OpenTX and EdgeTX if you are a power user. I will show you this. This is special functions, and we're going to create a new one. And right away, like anything else, you look at it and you say, this looks exactly the same as it did before. However, when you go to here, there's a lot more things. Some things show up. Set fail safe, screenshot. Okay, cool. This is great. Two things I want to point out. Um, first one is these go to screen and the idea behind that is that when you change something so the active condition would be something like a switch position or whatever a function switch a logic switch trim position a system event one of these things will set it off when you set something uh, it will change the screen so for example if you're going from one flight mode to another flight mode each flight mode could have its own screen you know, its own home screen so you can set it up so perhaps if you're in high rates you just want to glance down and look at a real basic screen that just has your timer on it 
So maybe that's all you want to look at. And you can do that with this. And then when you set your landing gear, maybe you, you want to look at your, your normal home screen. Amazing, it does that. The other thing I want to point out is lock touchscreen. And there, are, I've never ever have set something while I'm flying. I've never accidentally touched the screen. I don't know how people get paranoid about it. But I had one guy tell me one time, he looked at the radio and he said, I'm terrified of these touchscreen radios because I'm afraid I'm going to fly my plane and touch something and set something off and my plane's going to crash. Well, guess what? It's not going to happen. Um, because you can have it when you turn off your throttle, your throttle kill, all of a sudden you're locking your touchscreen. And the only way to go from one screen to the other is by flipping switches. And just the possibilities on that is endless. The last thing I'll point out is for people who fly gliders, we now have the variometer sound. And that is great because it was absolutely missing in ethos. All right, now I've teased you long enough. This is the thing I'm most excited about. And I will say this, I had to write the guide on how to set up stabilized receivers. The guide's going to change a little bit with Ethos 1.5 comes out because a lot of the heavy lifting will be done. Not all the heavy lifting will be done, but the thing that has driven people crazy is you had to load a Lua script. And it's not the greatest Lua script in the whole world, but it worked. Um... This is how things are going to change. Well, this is the thing that has got me the most excited. Two things, actually. We're going to create a new model. First one, receive model. So we're about to receive a model. And the idea behind this is that maybe you have a buddy who's, or you know the guy at the field who ends up buying the X20S because... You have the X20S, and he comes along and he says, uh, I got a plane that I want you to help me set up. And, you know, you're at the field, and you don't have a laptop, so you have to sit there and physically build a plane for the guy and spend about 20 minutes when you should be flying. And the guy says, yep, great, thanks so much. And then the next week, he shows up another plane, and blah, 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 on it goes. What you can do now is you can just send him one of your model files, put it on his transmitter, do a quick, few quick mods to get him up and flying, and get back to your flying. So that in and of itself is killer. Especially maybe you want someone to, perhaps you're selling your plane to a buddy and he wants to test fly it. And you uh, send him the model file for the plane, he puts it on his transmitter, and then you help him register and bind it to his transmitter and next thing you know he's up flying with your model file so it makes it even easier so the other thing that is mega cool in and of itself it takes about 10 seconds to transfer the files it's all done via bluetooth and there's ways to turn bluetooth on it's all over ethos 1.5 but this is freaking me the hell out well, before I get into it, I will say that there's still no flying wing right here. A little disappointed in that. Yes, you can make a flying wing by saying it has no tail. Really wish it was there, and maybe they'll listen to me someday and add it. But in the meantime, we're going to set up an airplane. First question, are you using a self-stabilized receiver from FR Sky? Oh my gosh, I'm about to cry because... This was the biggest nightmare for the last, I'd say, 10 or 11 months. People would call me up, and they would have their transmitter in front of them, and they would ask for questions as to, how can I uh, set up this transmitter, the stabilized receiver? And I'd have to explain to them about Lewis scripts, how to get it, how to put it on the transmitter properly, figure out when they didn't put it on properly. God, it, it's, you know, we have these really great stabilized receivers, and 
I've really enjoyed flying with them. Um, I find I'm buying more of them. They work so well. But the nuance of setting these things up was a freaking nightmare. And now it's a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier for most people. I just set up a TDS R6 tonight for a uh, plane I'm building. And I'll take you through the setup. It had one motor. It had two channels for ailerons. It had no flaps. And it had your traditional tail with one channel each. This was something new. Uh, I saw this on the X20 Pro. It started coming out last year. I love this. The idea is it's AETR. You still see AETR, but both A's are together. So channels one and five are together. Channel two for an elevator, three for a throttle, four for rudder. Just the way that it normally is. But this is set up correctly for a TDS R6. And then what you're going to do is you're going to need to set these things up. You usually set this up on a knob. So it's an analog. Select analog. And it's the one I use most of the time is pop one. And then for my flight modes, I usually set up switch D. So I'm going to select switch D. Now, for flight mode 2, I'm not going to set this up. So what this is is for hover and for knife edge, which I don't really care that much about. I just want stabilization, so leave that blank. Boom, give it a name. We call it test maybe there we go I press the button and it's not doing anything but test two for whatever reason I don't have pictures anymore on my I don't know what happened and I haven't had it in quite a while um, we'll get that working at some point now we'll go into mixer and this is set up properly you have gains on pot channel 13 flight mode this is what switches from self-level to stabilize to just manual is on channel 14, which is correct. And channel 15 was something I decided not to use. That's also correct. Um, so that's pretty much everything. I mean, you can go through. The thing is, there's so much to find. Each one of these things we're talking about is going to be its own video. I mean, it really needs to be explained. And I, not only myself, but our Free Sky video collaborators will help put that out. I'm going to include a link to this simulator in the description so you can play with it, download it and play with it yourself. Look around. Um, Ethos 1.5 should be a stable release sometime in April. That's what I feel comfortable saying right now. They're saying March. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope it does come out in March. But, you know, you don't want to rush this. You want this to be right because this is going to be something that is going to be huge. And it's going to make our lives a lot easier. I just want to give you a sneak peek of what to expect. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. and Or you can ask the questions at our official free sky ethos group which is called the official fr sky ethos group it's located on facebook and we'd love to have you thanks for watching have a great day